Hi, my name is Corbin, representing Group 7, and I'm going to talk to you about an introduction to global variables and equations. Now, in my project, I wanted to learn to apply global variables and equations in SOLIDWORKS, which I thought was a neat and convenient tool for beginners such as myself to apply to their projects. Using global variables and equations is a quick way to define dimensions of a part and allowing you to update them quickly. This is without the hassle of entering the sketch and changing a bunch of dimensions manually. I'm going to show you a brief introduction to global variables and equations and how, you can, how they can be used and applied and manipulated in SOLIDWORKS. Then I'll show you how I applied global variables to a simple spur gear. So we'll start by opening a part, change to metric. Okay, to access the equations and global variables pane, go to tools, down here to equations. Select that, and this will bring up the equations, global variables, and dimensions pane. This is your library for all your global variables, your suppressed features, and your equations. We're going to go right ahead and create a variable. Call it h. Don't forget the quotations. Make this 25 millimeters. Call it height. Select OK. Now, after you select OK, you'll notice in your folder tree, the equations folder now appears. And you can access your equations pane quickly by right-clicking this folder and selecting Manage Equations. And this will bring the pane back up. We're going to go ahead and add another variable, call that B, 15 millimeters, base. All right, let's, dimension, let's constrain some of these dimensions. So we'll start by making a, a simple sketch of a rectangle on the front plane. And there's actually two ways where you can constrain your dimensions. So, so you can start by doing it directly through your equations pane. Select Smart Dimension. Click on the, the dimension you want to constrain. Any unspecified value. Bring up the equations pane. And on the blank area under equations, you're going to click that, where the cursor is now blinking. Select your dimension. And you'll notice D1 at sketch one will fill that field. And this will link your dimension to a global to an equation. You can now select a global variable to fill in the value. We'll call this rectangle height. And hit OK. You'll notice that the global variable now fills this, this dimension. This red sigma will appear to tell you that the dimension is now constrained to an equation. And that equation is represented by the global variable. The second way to do that, the second way to constrain a, a dimension with two global variables is to do it directly through smart dimensions. In this blank area here, you can type in your global variable, it's like enter. But one thing you'll notice that the red sigma didn't show up. This shows that the global variable is entered in the constraint, but it's not linked to the global variable. So the proper way to do that is Again, smart dimension. And we're going to change this to equals the global variable. So set that to equals B. And there, the base is automatically constrained to however it was in the global variable, but it has the sigma there to show that it's linked. And one more neat thing I'm going to show you is that in the equations pane, you can actually use operators to manipulate your, your dimensions. So we'll set this to the height divided by 2. And the base will automatically update to the height divided by 2. So again, you can quickly alter these by changing these dimensions. So to, you set this to 40, and you'll expect the base to automatically update to 20. Just like that. Okay, now, of course, there are countless other features and applications using global variables, but this should give you a quick idea on how to use them. I'm going to quickly show you now how I applied global variables to my spur gear example. Okay, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the spur gear. So I'll quickly bring up a configuration of a spur gear. Now, gears are an excellent example to demonstrate global variables and equations, since there's really only three important input parameters in gear construction. That's diametric pitch, number of teeth, and of course, pressure angle. And once a gear is made, you can simply update the parameters to construct a desired gear. So I'll go ahead and make that part. Start by selecting a new part. 
Good. And we'll bring up the equations. So it's tools to equations right here. And we'll go right on ahead and input those in parameters. So we'll start with diametric pitch. We'll set that to two diametric pitch. We're going to input N for number of teeth. Set that to 18 number of teeth. And lastly, we're going to do the pressure angle. We'll call that phi. Set that to 20, which is a pretty standard pressure angle. Pressure angle. Awesome. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and add all the other gear parameters. And I'll quickly remind you what those are. Now, these are a function of the three. That includes the addendum, the dedendum, the clearance, the pitch circle diameter, and the base circle. So I'll bring back the gear here. So that's the addendum, the dedendum, the clearance, the base circle, and the pitch circle. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and add these, but I'm going to put this on pulse for now while I update these fields to save some time. All right, so we got the rest of our gear parameters listed here. So that includes the addendum, dedendum, clearance, pitch circle diameter, and base circle diameter. So now we're going to go ahead and start constraining the basic diameters of the gear. So let's create a sketch on the front plane. No more two, just a simple circle. Expand it outwards, and we'll dimension this any arbitrary size. Okay, we'll bring up the equations again, and we're going to set the first equation to the addendum uh, circle diameter. So this one's simply just going to be the pitch, the pitch circle diameter. You can just go ahead and click that there, plus two times the addendum. Don't forget the quotes. So this will be the addendum, addendum, circle, diameter. Good. And hit OK. And we'll go ahead and now and extrude this part to create our gear. Pretty simple. We're going to set it to 1.5 inches here. Should be good. Good width for the gear for now. You can always change that later. Awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and make our other circles. So this includes the pitch circle diameter. Make a sketch here. So this makes a circle for pitch circle diameter. Make a circle for the base circle diameter. And make a circle for the dedendum circle diameter. Hit OK. It'll probably be easier if we go no more to the sketch. Again, dimension these just any value for now. One, two, and three. All right, so we'll go ahead and constrain these just as we had before. Go back into the equations pane, manage equations, select the blank underneath the addendum circle. And we're going to go ahead and make this the pitch circle diameter, which is simply the same as the variable. So pitch circle diameter. Good. We're going to set this one to the base circle diameter, and that one is just going to be base circle diameter, which is the variable we've made already, base circle diameter. And lastly, we're going to set the dedendum. So again, you're just going to click the constraint and it'll populate it here. And this one is going to be your pitch circle diameter, so you can just straight type that in, minus two times the dedendum. And don't forget the quotes. Oh, since I got an error there because it's actually variables B. All right, we'll set that to D dendum circle diameter. Awesome. So here we have the basic. Oh, hit OK. Now here we have the basic gear diameters that are set. Now you can go ahead and construct the teeth of the gear just with the simple uh, teeth construction as we've done before. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just skip to the end result now just to save some time. Okay, and here I have the uploaded finished gear template. And we can kind of go back in time here so I can quickly show you what I did. I won't be able to show you everything in detail, but we'll kind of see where we left off. So we have this extrude here that shows the addendum circle. That's where we had our first constraint, uh, our global variable constraint. Continuing on, we had to make an involute tooth and then an extruded cut. 
Now enter this sketch here and kind of show you what I did. You'll probably recall there's the three circles that we had to make. That was the pitch circle, the base circle, and the dedendum circle. And then we had to make an involute tooth, which is simply a curve here. But the clearance of the tooth is defined by angles. And these angles are also constrained by gear parameters. So that's also just done in the equations tab. All right, return. Of course, extrude through and then a circular pattern. And the circular pattern is manually manually set for the number of teeth. Okay, so we'll do a quick demonstration here. We're gonna alter some parameters. Let's change the diametric pitch to five and see what happens. You can kind of see the gear becomes very small, kind of like a pinion. And that's just simply done by changing one of the parameters. So let's now set the diametric pitch to say six, and we will half or double the amount of gear teeth. So let's go 36. 36 teeth. And what shows up? So this is an odd looking gear. And why does it look like this? You have to remember that the circular pattern is manually set. You can't really set that using the global variables. So change that to 36. Hit OK. And you have a pretty big gear here. Show that off. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the brief introduction of global variables and equations. And like, as you say, as you can see, there's countless applications for these techniques and many other features that I didn't cover, but you can easily further investigate these. So on behalf of Group 7, thank you everyone for watching.